Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. Movie Phone TV's Fright Night Special is your ticket to all things scary at the movies. Here's what's hot on screen. Ellen Burstyn returns to help a desperate single father confront the demonic evil possessing his daughter in the sequel to the 1973 horror classic, The Exorcist Believer. Good day. Hey, be home by dinner. I love you. Good morning, Mr. Fielding. Good morning, Catherine. And here are your daughters, Angela and Catherine. It's about seven hours ago, and that's the last information we have. Catherine! Angela! If you can hear this, we love you. Please come home. I guess we grew confident in kind of tackling iconic movies after three Halloween movies, so I felt like it was time to tackle the most iconic horror movie of them all. From Ellen Burstyn being involved in the movie, the iconic music of tubular bells that everybody will remember when they hear it, and having some of those threads of nostalgia, but then also making sure that we are here to tell a contemporary story to a contemporary audience, so we're able to bridge those 50 years uh, in the genre. What are you and Catherine doing out there in those woods? You were just walking and walking. That's all I remember. Angela, can you tell your dad how long you were gone? A few hours. Baby, you've been gone three days. The audience is more sophisticated, and they've every as time goes by, you've seen more scary movies. So I think it's harder to scare people um, than it was uh, than it was 50 years ago. But I think David did a great job doing it. What'd you say? I didn't say nothing. I thought I heard you say something. Hey, baby. You okay? With Lydia and Olivia, their intuition was just on point, and they had an interpretation of these characters that brought it to life, and so when they'd connect in, in the pre-possession phase of these characters, you just saw that authenticity of, of childhood, adolescence. I like it. It's just, it shows a connection there. It's turning this into a conversation, I think it's cool. And then, once they put the makeup on and started to inhabit that and look at themselves in the mirror, the playfulness was amazing. Have you ever seen anything like this? Oh, me? No, but there are people out there who have. I think movies have evolved to have a little bit of a shorter attention span, so you have to be conscious of that and, and work with your efficiencies of how you're gonna explore these characters. But for me, it was really important to have the audience be able to identify with these people. This moment is about the love of a father and a daughter. This is landing beautifully. The narrative is coming out of here, 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 here. If these aren't situations that you could necessarily experience yourself, if you've never been possessed by a demon, for example, um, maybe you have found other forms of infection or some of these things that are uncertain in your life where the clinical diagnosis and the spiritual considerations come into play. What you're doing here is dangerous. People have died on both sides of possession. Come home, baby. Come back to us, okay? <laughs> if you don't make it, I don't make it. What makes a good horror movie is actually what 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 happens in between the scares. Oh, and everyone always focuses on the scares for a horror movie, but a, a great drama that you're pulls you in and you're riveted by is going to make a great horror movie. We'll stay right where we need to be for the ending. When you suspend disbelief and think what's going on is real and then a scare happens, you're terrified. Greatest jump scare ever, not good drama, won't work. One girl lives, one girl dies. You get to choose. Movie Phone Spotlight. A troubled young boy finds himself at the center of a war between science and religion in the supernatural thriller In the Fire, starring Amber Heard. I would like to see the boy as soon as possible. You keep him like this. It is best. Mama won't buy books from me. And why is that? Because I killed her. I think I wrote the first draft of this in maybe like 2014 or 2015. And uh, as my wife pointed out recently, whether I like it or not, anything I write almost always has to do with, with exiles and outcasts. I guess 
through some formative years, I, I felt like that myself. So that comes out in the writing, whether I want it to or not. The Lord had spoken. We had to exorcise Martin to get the devil out. I refused. I had written a TV pilot that she was attached to. I shared with her in the fire and she, you know, connected with it in a snap. A lot of personal connections for her. I mean, this is a character, like I was just saying, this is a character who is a fearless truth teller who, you know, has these convictions and sticks to them even when it gets her in hot water. We shot this movie just weeks before she went to Virginia for a trial. And the way she was able to commit herself and give 100% on this movie and having the looming cloud of that, I can't imagine it. I came to help you understand. Martine has a condition. If you just see right here. Our book also has a name for this condition. If this movie hadn't had a, a, a star in the child role of Lorenzo or Martine, it would have been a waste of time. It would be a garbage movie without a good performance from him. And the relationship that sort of blossomed between him and Amber on and off screen was, I mean, it's the foundation of the, of the whole movie. Doctor, do you believe you can cure him? I think the real arc that's important for her character is that she comes to this remote village with her science and her medicine and her facts and her preconceived notions. And a lot of what she sees from the kid, yes, he's disturbed, but she's also seeing some other stuff that she can't explain with her science and her medicine. And they need something to blame for that fear, and it's you, because you are different. Up next on Movie Phone TV's Fright Night Special, we look at the most recent installment of the Saw horror franchise and the terrifying thriller It Lives Inside. To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. People are gonna love that we brought back the uh, the inventiveness that's you know the cornerstone of the of the look of the movie. Here's what's hot on screen. In Saw X, Jigsaw returns with unique and terrifying traps as the iconic horror franchise explores the untold chapter of his most personal game. The cancer is still spreading. I'm afraid there's nothing else we can do. There is one person who might be able to help. Our program is a two-pronged treatment outside Mexico City. The results have been stunning. She saved my life. Saw X takes place between Saw 1 and Saw 2, which we had to do because we really wanted to bring back characters that had passed away in later Saw movies. What drew me to the project is how, how much of an emotional journey it is that you go on with John Kramer, and, and, that, and it's a journey you want to go on as he, as he tries to, uh, to save his own life and then uh, reacts to finding out that, that he's been scammed. So it was important to us to have Tobin Bell drive this story and not be in a flashback and to be able to bring Shawnee Smith back in a really terrific way where she becomes imperative to the storyline of this film. According to these scans, the tumor was never removed. How much time do I have? Months, at best. I still have a lot of work that needs to be done. We wanted people to know who he is. We wanted people to understand and like you, me, Mark, we could all be in the same situation of being seriously ill and trying to extend our life longer than the doctors are telling you. Hello, everyone. It's time to play a game. You all pretended to cure me, but what I have planned for each of you is very real. People are gonna love that we brought back the uh, the inventiveness that's you know the cornerstone of the of the look of the movie and the the, the nature of the traps and and having a storyline that has a lot of surprises to it. The only thing I have not provided is your anesthetic, but trust me, you will want to remain alert. You know we always look at the script first, right? And we're trying to help the audience with the story. And we go back to the original Saw 1 and Saw 2 because we wanted to 
be respectful to the audience. We probably had 10 traps we talked about and we narrowed it down. Out of all the men to cheat, you picked John Kramer? Please, don't hesitate. Each of these traps were tested six times, not just because we need to make sure that they look real, but for safety, integrating prosthetics, integrating stunts, integrating, you know, makeup, all of these different departments. We had eight departments that were all immersed while we were shooting the traps. Place a big enough piece of your cerebral tissue into the glass enzyme tank. This will save your life. So sweet. We really, really, we follow reviews, we follow user comments, and we really try to just come up with ideas that, of movies we want to see. The main theme was, was hope, right? Because John hopes that he's going to be able to save his life. And then the secondary theme is hope destroyed, right? Because he finds out that it's all been a scam. And they mess with his hope, which is wrong, you know? It's like the one thing a dying person has is hope that there's going to be another day. This is not retribution. It's a reawakening. It feels in some ways like a revenge story, but really he's, um, he's doing something arguably heroic on behalf of the victims of this scam that came before him. Find it. Watch it. In order to save her former best friend, a first-generation immigrant is forced to embrace everything she's tried to leave behind in the horror thriller, It Lives Inside. I moved to North America when I was four years old and spent a better part of my elementary, middle, high school experience sort of trying to fit in. And it also came from a lot of these ghost stories that I heard growing up, especially from my grandfather, and also wanting to tap into that very rich and storied mythology that Indian culture has. It was the level of understanding and, and feeling like I have been this girl and I, and I understand what she's going through and to be able to tell that through the lens of horror, I mean, you combine those two things together and it's a, it's a recipe for sign me up. When Tamir and I were kids, my mom used to tell us stories. What was exciting about this movie, it was a monster or a demon that I grew up hearing about and hearing those warnings like, don't go to sleep with bad thoughts in your mind because there's something out there. So some of those lines were really taken from my childhood. I didn't grow up hearing stories specifically pertaining to the Bishash. My dad has. She's not of this culture, so she didn't grow up with those stories and wasn't on board, which I think is so great. Because <laughs> you know, when it happens, it's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> what is the deal with Tamira? Is she doing all right? It does feel like I'm looking at a real family. And when I say a real family, I also mean my family and the kinds of families I grew up with. When there's a social commentary, when it's like a real hyperbolic expression of something very real, a very real fear, being a brown face in a white space. I'm mostly just happy that we get to have this representation and that other brown girls watching, other brown people watching, um, you know, they, they can see themselves represented in mainstream media. It teaches your soul. Coming up on Movie Phone TV's Fright Night Special, we look at the horror drama series The Changeling and the supernatural crime thriller A Haunting in Venice. It was explained as a kind of adult fairy tale that swept in magic realism. Movie Phone recommends a desperate father and husband races through an alternate New York City in search of his missing family as Lakeith Stanfield stars in the horror fantasy series, The Changeling. The reason I said no to you when you first asked me out. Do you want to go to dinner, dinner with me? Mm -mm. And the six times after that. Hey. No. 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 Is because I'm moving to Brazil. We get to examine Lillian's 
life in one episode. And so I want to take the audience on a journey into that interiority and into her emotions. So we're making like visual choices based on how can I get an audience to feel where she's at emotionally. She told me I had three wishes. When it falls off my wrist, those three wishes will come true. <laughs> Do not cut it. <laughs> it's really hard to bring yourself every day to a role and Lakeith absolutely did that. You know, it was through pre-production, production and post-production. You know, bringing his own experiences, his own thoughts to it and just every day just a level of commitment that was sort of astounding. Yeah, and for me, he, you know, he's not really in my episode and we were in the middle of shooting a really powerful scene and shout out to Jared, one of our actors, was gave his all and everything, and I was completely immersed in the scene, shouted cut, turned around, and Lakeith was there. He'd come to set just to kind of support this episode, support his fellow actors, and just his kind of caliber, one of the best actors of his generation. It raises everyone's bar, so he's an amazing anchor to our show. I need to know where my wife is. People don't just disappear. I came on it having read the novel, and thinking the novel's sort of brilliant and was this wonderful piece of sophisticated genre that dealt with really interesting issues and was set in this world that you really don't normally see. You know, it was explained as a kind of adult fairy tale that swept in magic realism and horror and suspense and the thriller. And then you're looking at the range of caliber of talent attached to it as well. It's a really rare opportunity to do something elevated, premium and challenging. You don't see. But you will. In case you missed it, actor and director Kenneth Branagh returns as Agatha Christie's most celebrated detective in the supernatural thriller, A Haunting in Venice. Hercule Poirot, I've found something. I've looked at it from every which way. I am the smartest person I ever met, and I can't figure it out, so I came to the second. I've seen a million of these so-called psychics, each one a fake. One of the most satisfying, I think, things I find from, from where we are now is that I think my great-grandmother is taken more seriously and given more respect than at any time in my life, and it's been a joy to be a part of that and to be able to enjoy that. Come with me to a seance. Spot the con, I can't. Detective, you are here to discredit me, but I can talk to the dead. As a director, he's just so, um, he's really fantastic to work with because he, he's such a master, I think, of his craft. Cool, let's give it a go. <clears throat> the collaboration was, was great, really, from the offset. Um, um, Kenneth was very, very clear uh, about what it was he wanted. We approach every film as a joyful beginning of, of something that you have to delve in with passion and, and thought. You can't trap us here. Somebody is dead. No one shall leave this place until I know who did it. I wanted to shoot this film with practical lighting and candlework because that was Ken's request. And we looked into the time period and, and you know, electricity was around, but they still used a lot of candlelight. And on a Halloween's night in Venice in, in the late 1940s, kind of that level of light that you see in the film was about the level of light that would have been in the real locations. You were saying? Michael Green and Ken actually felt that we should try and surprise our audience. We should try and do something different. And what we have, I think, is a great film. So. I was right to have that faith. You have been hiding here all this time. Who are you talking to? Stay tuned. There's more coming up on Movie Phone TV. Thanks for watching Movie Phone TV's Fright Night Special. To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it.